Our reading today is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. May God bless this reading to our understanding. There are many colors in a rainbow, all bound together as one. They are the promise of tomorrow, a hope for all the days to come. We are all children of that promise, made for the whole world around. Wherever love brings us together, a rainbow can be found. We are a rainbow. Together we are a sun. We are a rainbow to live for humankind. We are a rainbow. It's time for us to shine. We are a rainbow. Those words come from a song written 40 years ago now. The rainbow is that symbol which has been used for so many things over the years. It's often used as that symbol of diversity. Think of Jesse Jackson's Rainbow Coalition from the 1984 presidential campaign. For over 40 years, the symbol of the rainbow has been used within the gay pride movement. The pride flag was first developed in 1978, I believe. It's become much more prevalent in the last decade. We see it around quite frequently. 
Some of us even have masks in a rainbow. This one, which you've seen me wearing for several months now, was being sold by Out Loud St. Albert, which is the pride group in St. Albert. But the rainbow has a deeper, older history. It's wonderful to use it as that symbol of diversity, that symbol, of that reminder that white light passing through a prism breaks into all these other colors. It breaks into colors beyond what we can see. It breaks into the ones that are too, the wavelengths too high for us to see and the wavelengths too low for us to see, if I remember my junior high science appropriately. Oh, I'm getting waves from my daughters who say, yes, I did remember it appropriately. And so it is that symbol of diversity. All those colors coming together to make the white light. And it wouldn't be white light without them. But the older story is that it's that symbol of covenant and that symbol of promise, which I think ties into the use in diversity and from many one, from one many. But it's that symbol of God saying, I won't do this again. The story of Noah and the flood is problematic in many ways. The story of Noah and the flood is the story of first of a God who looks at creation and says, well, this was a mistake. These humans I created are going around doing everything wrong. It's time to start again. It's time to wash them all away. One of the jokes about why God never got his PhD is that because in his first experiment he washed away all the data. And yes, God calls Noah, and Noah builds the ark. And then after the waters recede, Noah sends out the birds to see if the land is ready for habitation again. And there's a story of a flood in many, many different cultures from the ancient Near and Middle East. They all have a lot of similarities. In the Greek myth, Zeus walks around on the, on the earth and is mistreated by people, so decides to flood the earth and saves one couple. But at the end of our story, God speaks to Noah. And I think God regrets what God has done. Regret isn't necessarily an emotion we assign to God. Actually, a lot of people have trouble assigning emotion to God at all, as if God is somehow beyond emotion, above emotion. I think the God I read about in here is, God, is full of emotion, is very emotive. In this story, I think God regrets what God has done. And just before the passage that Sharon read, God says, God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, just as I gave green plants, I give you everything. Only you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is its blood. In the beginning in the creation story, God gave Adam and Eve all the plants of the earth for food accepting the tree, fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that didn't go so well. In this story, God adds to it the eating of flesh. Not that I think people were vegetarians before this flood, and I actually don't think the flood ever actually happened, but in our, in our story, this is how we move from being herbivores to omnivores. And then in the passage Sharon just read, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds and domestic animals, and every animal of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. 
The rainbow is the sign of that promise. The sign of the promise who says, of a God who says, I'm not going to give up on you again. I'm not going to wash you all away. And because God is faithful to that promise, God tries many different tools to try to get us to live as we were created to be. Shortly after this, God will create a covenant with Abraham and say, I'm going to create a special people. Several generations later, God creates a covenant with Noah, or with, this was Noah, with Moses. Here's some rules. Here's how we'll live together. God will send prophets. God will send Jesus. To remind us of how we live. But in this covenant, in this promise, God says, I'm not going to give up again. I'm not going to do that again. That's why I think God regrets what God has done. I think God is here the parent who overreacted. Not that any parent ever overreacts with their children, right? <laughs> and says, okay, that, I went too far. Which in itself is problematic anyway. It's not a really healthy dynamic for living together to overreact and then say sorry. But God promises that God will always be there. And God won't give up again. The rainbow is a sign of hope. The rainbow is the sign of that promise of the God who loves us and won't give up on us. What I find interesting is that often, I know whenever I was growing up and we talked about Noah and the rainbow, we missed this part. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of the flesh and all the waters. The rainbow isn't just to remind us. The rainbow is to remind God. When we live together in covenant, when we live together under treaties or agreements or pacts or covenants, we need to remind each other from time to time what it means to live up to that part of who we are. Apparently, even God needs a reminder. The rainbow is such a reminder. What reminds us? What are the reminders in our lives to remind us how to live according to the covenants? the treaties, the agreements, the pacts that we have made either as individuals or corporately. What reminds us? What keeps us faithful to those agreements? What might help us be more faithful to those agreements? Because we are people of rainbows. We are people of promises. If we can't live together in covenant, society won't work. Society doesn't work if we only try to live by legal terms and laws and rules. Society works because we live together as people of promises who can keep and trust each other's promises. What reminds us to keep our promises. Not that we'll get it right all the time. I think we're honest enough, no, we won't. But as covenant people, as people who live with the God who is faithful to God's promises and use that as our model for being faithful to our promises, what reminds us? I think the rainbow can be one of those things both as the reminder of God's promise to Noah and his sons, but also of that reminder of all those other things rainbows have been used for. Diversity. Pride. 
a reminder that white light is made up of many different things, just as our society is made up of many different things. The rainbow also, I think, reminds us of our relationship with the rest of the world, because the rainbow covenant is not just made with Noah and his sons, and his sons' sons, and his sons' 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 sons, and so on and so forth. The rainbow covenant is made with the whole world. All of creation. The rainbow can remind us of that too. Our call to live with respect in creation. But above all, I think the reason we're always so excited, at least we are as children, maybe we aren't as so much as adults, after the rain, after the storm, to look out and see the rainbow. If we're really lucky, we see a double rainbow. Or to look out on that cold, frosty winter morning and see the sundog, which again is light refracting and you see the colors. Is that it gives us hope. Even if we can't really explain why it gives us hope, there's just something about a rainbow that brings relief, Comfort, promise of hope, promise that things will be better. Yesterday afternoon, I found an article from April of 2020, which asked the question, why are rainbows appearing all over the place? And it wasn't because of rain. It wasn't sunlight refracting through raindrops. It was people putting pictures of rainbows in their windows or painting their windows with rainbows. April 2020, in the middle of the first wave, as we were just still learning what it meant to live with this pandemic, people were sharing rainbows with each other, putting them in the windows so that those people who happened to be out could drive by and see them. The rainbow is our sign of promise. It's our sign of hope. It's our sign of the God who is with us no matter what and won't give up on us. We are rainbow people. We are people of hope. So if you can see the world around us and wonder how it can be, remember we were given a promise, a hope for the world to see. There is one who brings out all our colors and binds us together as one. Reaching out to our sisters and our brothers, we find our place in the sun. We are a rainbow. Together we are a sign. We are a rainbow to live for humankind. We are a rainbow. It's time for us to shine. We are a rainbow. May God help us to live as people of the covenant, faithful to our promises. Amen.